Welcome to Bruce's Shorts. Today's episode is all about good practice and security in the cloud. Now, I was at the AWS Summit this year, and I can honestly say that it was a game changer. So for me, as Ben Davenport pointed out in his popular LinkedIn post, you can actually tell how good a conference was by whether or not you change your way of thinking when you leave the conference on the last day. For me, the security automation session changed my thinking with one little teeny tiny phrase. The guy there said, treat your virtual machines like cattle and not pets. Simple, right? Uh, but what does that actually mean? Uh, well, for the benefit of my vegetarian friends, I'm going to change the saying a little so that I don't actually have to kill any cows during this episode. So treat your virtual environment like crops and not gardens. Imagine that you have a virtual infrastructure that's become compromised. The bad guys have got in. You don't really know how, you don't know where, you're not sure when, but you have to do something about it, and you should do something about it right now. So the crops analogy comes from farming, where if your crop gets infected with something nasty, there's probably some danger that it will spread to the rest of your farm and affect the rest of your crops, and that's going to change your economics in a bad way, and that's really what farming's all about. But your garden's different. You'd spend a lot of money keeping your beautiful roses beautiful, and your giant cucumbers giant in their perfect condition, even when the economics didn't make any kind of sense because, well, you've got emotional attachment to your garden. So the crops not garden saying is all about making certain that you can replace an infected infrastructure with a healthy one as quickly as possible. The discussion then quickly moves from um, what to how do I do that? So if you're building a virtual infrastructure using a console or a human interface, then this is going to slow down the speed at which you can create and recreate your infrastructure, which in turn means that any compromise event is going to last longer and have a bigger impact on your business and your brand and your economics. So quickly you realize that you need to write some code to create your infrastructure and that this code should be checked into a repository so that it can be replicated around the world. And most importantly, it can also be validated. Once your entire infrastructure is in code, you can do static analysis on that code to see if the cause of the infection is actually in the repository or not. Did the bad guys, and yes it usually is guys, get into your runtime environment? Or were they already in there, deep in a library buried in your repository? As well as being able to run static analysis on your infrastructure code, you can also do performance tests to figure out how quickly you can pull down an infected infrastructure and rebuild a beautiful new shiny clean infrastructure. You can do then impact analysis to figure out how quickly you could respond if you do have an event and whether the bad guys are likely to economically impact your business. We live in a world where nobody knows where the next zero day exploit is going to come from, but if you plan for the fact that you might get caught by it, then you have a chance to recover gracefully. So here's an example. A highly successful service company based out of London had the misfortune for their headquarters to burn down, yet none of their customers noticed. So this is a great example of a great business continuity plan, well practiced and well executed. So thank you, Sohernet, for showing us the way. So happy farming, everybody, and until the next time.